Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome back to DIY Corner. Today we're building the Bafaco Lich. L Lich. I think it's called Lich L I C H, which I believe is is some peculiar language for for witch, possibly. It doesn't really matter, but this this is what it is. It's this kit here. It's quite substantial and the Lich is uh, Bafaco's take on the Rebel Technologies OWL. Now OWL is like a DSP platform and Rebel Technologies built that into both a pedal and also a Eurorack module, quite sizable Eurorack module. Now Bafaco have sort of taken this on, taken on all the, the Rebel Technologies production and have started to tweak it and bend it into that own specific Bafaco kind of vibe. And this is the first thing they released, released it last year. I've had the kit for a little while and it seemed to be about time I put the thing together. Now, as I understand it, it's not the simplest. It's going to be perhaps tricky because of the density with which Bafaco have been putting their kits together. It's a lot of stuff you have to put on these boards and then you've got to try to fit a couple of boards and sandwich them together. So it's gonna be interesting to see how problematic that kind of thing is. Hi, it's Future Me here just coming at you from the end of the video just to say that I did hit a couple of problems with my build of the Lich and you'll see that unfold during the course of this video but I felt I should pop back in time just to say that I had a very early version of the kit and Bafaco has since improved various aspects of it including some of the component sizes so that many of the struggles that I had of putting this together are no longer there. So don't worry about those sorts of things. Just watch my frustration from the perspective of entertainment. We'll see how we go, yeah? Do a bit of time lapsing so you don't get too bored during all the resistors, but I'll try to do as much live as I can. It seems appropriate, and I'll point out any flaws or stumbling blocks or things that I just don't understand as we go. Right? Good. Good, we'll take your seats, grab a coffee. Let's, let's look into the bag and see what this one is all about. Right, right, chips, knobs, yeah. See, this is interesting. This is the Rebel Tech DSP board all on its own. So that's already done. We don't need to worry about that. I'm not trying to do crazy surface mount with enormous chips. That's all a complete unit that will get baked into there at some point. That's good. Chips. Look at that. Look, look, look. Do you see? It's a flipping header that I'm going to have to cut. Well, that's just awesome. I'm already just going to enjoy this I think right so here is the front panel and a couple of PCBs not two complete ones it's like one and a half now I should add that they seem to be expanding the chicken farm next door which is lovely so we're going to have a, a constant bubbling I imagine of chicken noises and, appre and appreciative cockerel crows to accompany the video I'm just, I've just made my peace with it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So let's have a look at these a little bit closer. So there's the front panel. And then look at that. Look, it's got some strange sort of hangy bit on it. Like that's there on purpose. How weird. That's interesting. Now these, I'm pretty sure, just snap, he says. What is going on next door? Ah, oh, it did it. All right, so it's like like a Bafaco key ring. Cool, all right, right. take that to one side. Might need to just iron the, those break those off a little bit more smartly in a minute that's one PCB that's the other one okay good so yeah I mean if you look at that closely you can see that is fairly packed in there that's gonna be fun good right so front panel and then we get all of the bits so we've got the things I need to worry about at the end Stuff I'll be doing a bit quicker. Bag A, some stickers. 
bag B. So we've got sort of resistors and diodes, I should think. So there's a ferret bead in there. Hmm. <laughs> or two. And then capacitors. Then knobs. Oh, there's not so much. Power cable, magic, befaco, nut tool. I'm going to be doing this in my usual, just getting on with it kind of way. So I haven't uh, pre-read the manual or anything. I'm just going to have a look, go and, and just get stuck in. Soldering both boards at the same time, keeping them in the panel together. Bugger! <laughs> Until stated to split them. <laughs> awesome. See, that's why I don't read the manuals, is because I just like to stumble into ridiculousness. So, all right, first off, don't do this, right? I know you want to. Don't do it. <laughs> oh dear, I'm just the worst. I really should pay more attention. But you know what it is? I find that I've either got to get stuck in or I'm just it's just not going to happen. You know, I'm not retired where I can sort of sit around and think, what should I do today? Hmm? Might potter in the garden. No, no, that's not. I've got like 16 things all vying for attention. Going, do me, do me. I want to do what? Let's do this. So in order to, to make this happen, I just have to jump in and get on with it without with a minimum amount of study and preparation. But that's what we like. That's why it's fun, I think. But uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, so some steps are not obvious. So please read them thoroughly. I'll try to. I will, Manu. I'll try to read it as thoroughly, as more thoroughly than I have so far. Yeah. Is that all right? OK, good. Open bag A. OK. Well, let's just get started with resistors, shall we? I mean, you can't go far wrong. It suggests measuring them. So I do have a multimeter. And so I will. Don't feel that that's something that you must have and must do. But if you're following this guy, then hopefully I'll have the same types of resistors that you'll have and I'll be able to identify for them so that you won't have to. Yeah, got it? Good. Right. Open bag A. Now, I do have this also open on my computer. As far as I can understand, it's the paper guide I got with it and the online one are identical. They both appear to be version 1. Although that does have a date on it, this one doesn't. So I will just go backwards and forwards to make sure that I'm not tripping up anything. So anything I'm not sure about, I will have a check between the two, just to be sure. Oh, that looks about right. So, bag A. Ooh, look at these buggers. Look, look, strange kind of greeny resistors. So what I'm going to need to do is work out what all of these are. So I'll put the diodes to one side for the moment. Because the resistors have not been labelled. Now, of course, you can do it on the numbers. Because if you know there's 14 of one lot, then find the lot there's 14 of. These are likely to be 100k. But let me see if I can actually check that. Omage. One on there, one on there, but 100k, awesome. Now there's an 11, a pack of 11 and a pack of 10. This looks like an 11. So these should be 470. Yeah, more or less, more or less, that'll do. That's good enough for me. Then there's 10, which are 1k, so that's probably these. One, two, three, four. It's supposed to be 1k, 0.995. Yeah, yeah, 1k, that's enough, close enough. Close enough. This is going to be 4K7 or 100. They look like 100. Well, there's another 8, isn't there, which is 4K7, which looks like these blue ones here. Yep, 4.7. 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These should be 20. 19.9, yeah. This is a 4. So a 12. Yeah, 12K. 33, yeah, another bunch of four here, 10k, then the two should be one meg, 
Yeah. And a single one should be 2k2. 2.2. 2, 2. Good. Okay. So I've identified all of the watsits. Now I need to know where on earth I put them. Now I might put them on both at once. I don't really know. Because <laughs> it's all the resistors, not just. Oh, wow. So I'm having to treat these two boards together. So let's just start off doing a few and then I'll put it on time lapse and you can uh, you can sit back and enjoy the smooth soldering of stuff. So 15, 16. Seventeen and eighteen. Twenty seven. Now, a few people have advised me to solder from the top when you're doing resistors, which is interesting, because that way you don't have to fight amongst all the legs. But I'm not quite ready to try that yet. <laughs> it seems seems counterintuitive somehow, although I can I can see the advantage. But I'd also probably need something to hold this in order to do the soldering, because otherwise it's going to be bouncing around on the legs. So I'm going to save that for another time on perhaps a board that's not quite so dense. Anyway, so that's the first half of the 100Ks put in onto this board. The rest are going to go onto the other board. Let me just solder these in. See how we go. They are certainly packed in there. But I think we're going to manage this, so I will see you back here to have a look at the diodes. So that's the resistors done on both those boards. Do them all at once, relatively straightforward, no real bother there. Other than the fact it is packed. Everything is small, magnifying glass or those sorts of glasses are very, very useful here. And just the labeling on the individual resistors, it's not always inside the resistor, it's not always inside the screen print, sometimes it's on the outside, sometimes it just takes a moment or two just to go, oh, oh, oh is that one? That kind of thing. So, you know, provided that you take your time, a little bit of patience, 
It's no bother. No bother at all. On to the diodes. Anything we need to know in here about the diodes? There seems to be two lots. There's this lot, which are the BAT 85s, our old frame BAT 85s. And these ones, the 5817s, the chunkier ones. You must observe the polarity. You see the band on them? So this is the, uh, <laughs> the oh, I don't know, the line. The line refers to that. Let's see what it says on the board. So where do these go? So we can work that out. Yeah. D1, D2, there. So the big fat ones go on the small board and that line needs to line up with the line on the actual diode. So let's stick those two in while I'm here. D1, line is on that way. That goes like that. D2, the line is going in the opposite direction, like that. So that's easy enough. For the ones on this board, D100 to 107, yeah, you can see them all on here. Again, with the line is nicely drawn, so you know exactly where they're going to go. There's no other diodes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So they're just going to go in these spaces here. You don't even have to worry about. You don't have to worry about the numbers. Something I do have to worry about, though, in a moment, ferrite beads. Because the little ferrite beads, I think, came in the resistor pack, and I'm pretty sure when I turned on my little fan here, they just blew away. So you just got to make sure that they go the right way around. So the line goes with the line that's on the board. They're not all round the same way. They are different. There's that one. And these are one of the things you get wrong the most often. Either with diodes themselves or with LEDs. Which are diodes with lights in. Put that a little bit too wide. I need to pull that in there. Just make sure you get your bending nice and tight. They do have much thicker legs. That's some terrible bending. Okay, they're all in. Let's solder them in. Okay, sold the two ferrite beads using a recycled diode leg. As if they were a resistor, ferrite beads don't have polarity. So, within this bag that I poured out, bag A, here. Oh, look, 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 they're still in there. God damn, did I just get away with that. <laughs> that is flipping fantastic, that is. Whoa. So right, these ferrite beads, what you use, you use a leg and you stick it through the middle and you solder it on. So, is that going to stay? Yeah, right. Put it through, like that, that's one. Two. I am a bit jammy sometimes. This goes on to F1. Is it? F1, F2. F1, F2 on this board here. F1. Wow, it's funny how big they look through my glasses. F2. Oh, I can't believe I'm away from I, sh I was sure I was onto the floor with a magnifying glass trying to find those little buggers. 
Now, it says that they want me to do the IC sockets next, which are here, as opposed to the capacitors, which are here. See, I always find that debatable as to which is bigger or taller on the board, because you want to do the shorter things first. But no, I think they're right. I think they're right. We're going to go with it. I'm going to trust Bufaco in this occasion. Just go with it. So the IC sockets, 1, 2, 3, 100, 101. So they all seem to be the same. Trying to get the orientation right. So we've got the nick there. The little, little bit on the silk screen. That goes along with a little bump on the actual holder. So it should go in like that. This one should go in like that. And this one over there. And here there should be two more. I'll solder those in and I'll see you in a minute. Right, we're on to bag B. Bag B. Capacitors and stuff. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Bunch of those, bunch of transistor typey things, lots of little headers. Oh, that's a bit bent that one. Headers, headers, some electrolytics, power coupler, should we call it? Bit of there. One of those, one of those the little head of things that I so adore, so, so, so adore. Oh, a couple of flatty ones and regular nipply ones. <laughs> right, so there's 19 of the 104s, which I reckon are going to be these ones. Let's give that a slight close up. So there's 104 on there, just about. There's 19 of those, or should be. So that's the 100 ends. There should be six 101s, which are these sort of old fashioned looking ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six of those. Two of these flappy ones, <laughs> 10 microfarad. One, oh, I don't know what that one is. Six of these. 2N2, 147 electrolytic, and 210 microfarads. So we have a random, random one here. All right, not going to worry about that for the minute. Put that to one side. So we're just going to focus on the capacitors. Right, rock and roll. Just to do the last couple of capacitors, the electrolytic ones, it's got a flattened edge. That flattened edge goes to the negative, which is the one that has the bit of the line on it. There's a line on the capacitor itself. So the long leg goes into positive, negative goes into the other one. It's very clearly marked. Wiggle them down. That's a much better, that's a much better job than that first one. And then there's the lone one, which is the 47, that goes into C2 up here. Opposite way round, long leg positive. Finish these off and see what's next. Right, 
Right, a fuse. Oh, that must be what this is. Is this what this is? MX20 it's called. Uh, it's got a 20 on it. It's got what it looks like XX20. That must be what that is. Which goes into F100, so it'll be on this board somewhere. Right at the top here. Doesn't look like it has a polarity. Let's stuff that in. Good, that's the fuse down. Right, that's that page sorted. And now, where are we going? What we got? Regulators and transistors. So there should be one LM4040. Gosh, I cannot read that. 4040D. That's got to be it, isn't it? Because there's three of those. That's easy. And there's one something else, which is a this big chunky one here. Which is a 78L05. Yeah, so by process of elimination, it must be this one. That goes into Reg 100. Reg 100, there. Look, on there. It's on this board right here. On this board here. Got to get it the right way around. It's on the silk screen. So that's not a problem. Just going to get all three legs in at once. Like that, okay. And then for the three... You've got Q1, Q2, and Q100. So Q1 will be on here. These two big chunky ones here. Q1, Q2. Q, the uh, silk screen puts them back to back. No bother. Q100. Yep. Down this end. Easy peasy. Then this big fat jobby. I think I'll put that in in a minute. Because that's a different height to the rest. I'm just going to jam these ones in. Having to watch a little bit of short circuiting action going on in here. As it starts to get crowded. So as I'm bending legs in order to hold things in. I am potentially bending them against... The mountain peaks of other soldered bits so it's just important to be aware and then when you cut the legs off just to make sure they're not touching now is that it no is this one here so you've got the big chunky one to put on u1 it's probably on here yeah sits on the end of there don't bother don't bother can only go that way around Lovely. Now it's my favourite thing in the world. The headers. So we should have female headers. And male headers. That's a power thing. So spiky and not spiky. Depending on which way you look at it. So female headers 2 times 4 and 2 times 1 by 5. So, two of those, two of those. And these go on, all on the big board, 101, 100, 102, 103. So the fours are on 100 and 101. Let's just check this is right here. One. Two by four, two by four, yeah. 100 and 101 there and there. And the singles go down the bottom. Can I get these to all go on at the same time? Possibly. I like the fact that these are all cut the right size. I'll use my magic piece of plastic over the top to help me turn it over. I hope that they've stayed relatively flat. For these ones I will just tag a leg to ensure they're all straight before I solder the rest. 
Oh, you know, straight's a relative term. <laughs> So what's going to happen, we think, is that this is going to sit on here somehow. Like that, or that way up. Not sure which way yet. So what we can do is we can place these into these headers and then solder them on here. Which way up is it going to go? So yeah, it should go on top of the board. And so it is going to be like this. Scary! So... I'm going to do that. I'm going to put these all in. I'm going to put these on top so that they fit through roughly. Well, it can't be rough, it has to go or it doesn't. Like that. I'm just going to push that together. Oh, look, so you've got a bit of trouble going on there. But it closes well enough. A little bit of Barney in this particular corner there. That's not going flat. So, is there anything I can do to adjust that? So it's this meeting up with this big fat fella here. I'm going to bend that one out of the way a little bit. easily no I cannot not easily they can't go any further into each other that's too fat a capacitor to move out of the way I mean I could flatten it down that way Would that work no <laughs> no absolutely not because that then clashes with the with the transistor that's there, the regulator that's there. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to just have that a little bit high. Because look, I mean, they are rubbing against each other. There's nothing I can do. I can't get those away. Not without soldering that capacitor on the other side of the board. Maybe that's an answer. I mean, this is the front panel. Would that be the end of the world? It's a possibility. And then that would fit nicer. All right, here's a bit of a mod then. I mean, it's not far off. It's only a little bit showing, but it's just not completely flat. So, all right, I'm going to make an executive decision. I'm going to pull out. Am I? Can I actually get to it? This tiny capacitor here, I'm going to pull that out. See if I can mount it on the other side. Ooh, right, okay, this is exciting. So, should I get this right? It's just here. It's that middle one. So, let me solder sucker. Heat it up. <laughs> Throw solder everywhere. It's not moving. Yes, it is. All right, got one side out. All right, I'm not sure if that worked. No, not exactly. Okay, come on, you little thing. Okay, that's out. So, okay, the idea is these weeny legs, little stumpy legs it's got left. Ow! Just to then mount it on this side of the board. So it's out of the way. All right. Oh heavens. Alright, I might have damaged something else. So let's finish the job. Oh, I 
did. I completely broke that. Oh my goodness me. Oh no. I broke the regulator. Oh, ass. Ass. That might be the end of this. So what happened, I think, was that as I was trying to pull this out, so I was hooked this under, I pulled against that and completely broke it. Completely broke it. In two places. Oh no. Now, can I solder that together? Is the question. Oh goodness, I might have blown it completely. What a disaster. I don't think I'm going to be able to repair it in place. That would just be asking a lot, I think. Right, okay, that's a shame. That's a shame, but there we go. I'm trying to do something, and it backfires. You then have to see what else is going to happen. Right, so the question is going to be, can I realistically solder these legs back on? <laughs> there's just no way in. There's no way. I'll replace it with another one from something else at some point. Right, so what I was attempting to do was to put these two things together, to marry these two things up. Now, the regulator and that capacitor now gone. <laughs> that should not be a problem. Or is it still a problem? Was that not the problem all along? Now, see, that goes in there flush now. Now that that's out of the way there, just got to be able to fit in that uh, power regulator another point. But now all these are through, so I can solder all of those without any bother. So now before I do that, I've just noticed that the power thing here was actually before I did this. Let me take this off. Put this on to make sure that that does not contribute to the difficulty. So that just pops into to there, nice and easy. Turn that over, solder that in without even thinking about it. With a bit of luck. Well, I don't think I've ever completely destroyed something before. So that's interesting. See, no, that's good. That wasn't particularly flat either, <laughs> though that fits in there all right. That's all good, all the way around. Great, I'll solder all that together. And then we can move on to what looks like something to do with the digital board. Hmm, all righty then. So that all soldered, should be able to wiggle it apart, like so, and those are always going to marry up really well. Genius, total genius. Thank you very much. Now, so in order to place the owl board properly straight, we must first place the female pin headers in the PCB, and then the male headers into these females, just like we've done a moment ago. It will help us place this bit so we're getting into the into the real struggle now <laughs> not that it hasn't already been a struggle of course so I've got my little digital board and this has got all these headers around the outside oh gee flipping whiz right and that's going to fit up with something here or that way up on that board Joy of joys, how are we going to do this? So place the connector, just connector. I don't know what that is. I don't know what the just connector is. GST selector, something that says MIDI. Got nothing spare in that bag. Nothing spare in the other bags. What is this JST thing they're talking about? So I've got the owl bag. Maybe it's going to be something to do with that. So let's have a look. So I've got this, this stupid thing here, which I'm going to have to cut. Although the male ones to cut are not anywhere near as difficult. I've got a three pin one here. Which could be what I'm looking for. Right, let's see 
what we should have. We should have three one times five. One, two, three times five. One times ten. One times no, two times the ten. One times the twelve. Well, I've got sixes. <laughs> and one times a three. Yeah. So what is the, the JST connector? No, I don't know what that refers to. Now, in the new manual, it says there's a 1 by 12. I've got 2 by 6s. I'm just going to have to squash together. Yeah, that makes sense. So where the heck do these go? Which side of the board do they go? Must go this side, the same as the rest. So place all the pins on control PCB at silk screen side. Yep, silk screen side. Solder them, making sure they're straight. So that means I think one there. That's a six. <laughs> I don't know. Where does it? What? Where does it go? Wow! That's. I don't know. I mean, that's a six. Where do these go? That's a ten. Yeah. That's a ten. Two sixes must go here. <laughs> oh my goodness this is this is okay right not gonna go great I mean I can get those in there but they're ridiculous then I've got these three fives it's a five there that's it no because that's a six and a three I mean I guess that's a five okay there's a five there which means there's a five on that corner Again, if that will fit in and then there's a five there all right so we found all the bits the only weird bugger is this one here so I'm gonna have to I think slice a bit off the edge of that to try to make that happen so I believe in the in the new kits according to the uh, the instructions it comes with a 1 by 12 now rather than these 2 by 6s but I think what I'm gonna have to do is just attempt to slice a little bit off it's hard Because that's going to come out if I'm not careful. Right. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That was enough. Just a slice. Just the tiniest slice. Now yeah, let's put my magic uh, thing on the top. See it all rocking about. <laughs> this is just nuts. I hate these things. I hate the headers. I hate the headers. So I'm going to have to be very careful. And I'm going to see whether it feels about right because they're very easily not straight. They're just sliding about all over the place. How can I do this better? Maybe I'm gonna have to do like one at a time. Now I could use, I could try using like tape and stuff. People say that's a good idea. I'm gonna try a bit of that. Right, so I'm gonna assume that that's okay for the minute. I'm gonna tag one leg and then here. see if that looks any good yeah that's good straight enough let me do the rest of those excellent good enough right let's try this five here Maybe I'll just do them one at a time. That's not a five. <laughs> if I can hold it down. This corner together. Alright, looking okay. And then I need to do the six or rather the two for the twelve. Am I making a pig's ear out of this? Could be. Right, so scary headers put in place. So place the male headers into the female ones. 
So I've got five to go there. Ah, oh, there. <laughs> so there's one I've completely missed, which is there. Cool. Right, well, let's just put that one in. Take these other bits out. It is always these bits which seem to end up being the most difficult. It's not the uh, soldering of components, it's the crafting of the headers and those bits and pieces to put together. Those, those are the tricky bits. So what I need, I need uh, 12 to go in there. So up to there. Now these ones relatively, I mean you can break them, but I'm going to snip it there. And that generally works okay. So that should just pile in there. All right, and then this fella somehow fits on top. I think a bit like that. In, 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 and this you have to fit there without smashing into each other. Per no problem. <laughs> problem. All right, so I did that. This should be enough for your knees. Few spaces. Place the owl board, pin, owl board on the pins gently. Once all the pins are in place, proceed to solder them all. Remove the owl board and then continue with assembly. All right, so these all seem to be in there. Not everything has a, a pin going through it. I'm assuming that that's all exactly as it's supposed to be. That seems to fit. There can't be any other way it can go in or go round. So I'll just solder that. And then we'll put the front panel on or something. Right, so it says at this point we should perform a smoke test. Now, excuse me, I'm a disaster. Smoke test is, is that old test where you plug power into it and see whether it smokes. The idea being that it shouldn't. Now, unfortunately, because of my missing regulator, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can take this any further because it says that you could put all of the front panel stuff on, but it will make it much more difficult to test if you do that because you've got to get some probes in you've got to measure a couple of places check voltages and stuff and with all this garbage on that will make that much harder so i think i'm going to have to pull this one to a close just for now i'll finish it off as soon as i've worked out where i can borrow or steal another regulator from and then we'll finish it off but for now i'm just going to put it to one side let me plug these bits in so that I don't end up bending any of the pins and that I can see that it's going to fit nicely. See that goes in nicely there. This hopefully, <laughs> it's just, there's just the edge where I broke it off. So I'm going to slice that off. Otherwise nothing else is sticking out over the edge. That should just go on there peachy. Other than my slightly wonky power connector <laughs> that's all in there that's all in there perfect as straight as my usual soldering I would say good and we'll come back to it I'm back I'm back Pafako very kindly sent me another one of these for my shame <laughs> For my shameful destruction of the previous one and this uh, hopefully can just drop into the little gap I made with my broken one because I did clear that out relatively well I think so I'm gonna, I'm gonna solder this in here if I can get it in the holes there the right way around in the holes just needs a little bit of solder right great <laughs> 
Sorry, I'm just a little bit of squiff today. So we got to this point, the troubleshoot, troubleshooting point. That was where we were going to turn it on to see whether it made smoke. But I couldn't do that because I was missing that vital component. So now we've got that in place. we should be ready to roll. So at this point, we perform a smoke test and check that the power arrives at every relevant spot on the boards. It's very important as testing all this once the mechanical components are soldered will be hard. Connect both boards, then the module to the power supply. Please be aware that as the boards are connected, that as the boards are connected, orientation of the main PCB will be reversed from the picture below. Okay. <laughs> right now i'm taking from this that we're not involving this fella we're not involving the owl platform that doesn't appear to be in the picture as far as i can see and it says just above it that once we've put all these these headers and bits and pieces in it says remove the owl platform from the board to keep on with the build so i'm not putting that in in case that blows up that sounds like a good idea now the other question is about the ICs. So what I'm trying to say is that there's no mention of actually putting the ICs in until after this stage. Oh, I, I think it's saying, oh, okay, if your power supply be behaves funny or one of the regulators gets hot, unplug the module immediately. Possible errors could be one of the regulators is reversed, a reverse diode, reverse electricity capacitor, maybe you have a bridge somewhere. It's actually quite a bit of measuring has to be done here. This is a little bit sort of anxious, a little bit... Oh, fuck, I didn't put that in flipping focus. So, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit anxious about it. Lots of test points. Let me see. Oh, I don't know. So let me... I need to get a power supply. So let's put this in here can only go one way round. So I'm going to stick this in the end. It's not currently turned on, I don't think. <laughs> right, so I'm looking for smoke and other nasties. So I'll turn it on over here. That's on. Okay, as far as I can tell. There's nothing bad going on. Is there? I don't think so. So I need to mark, find a spot marked ground. What, in there? That's really annoying. How am I going to get in there? There or there? It's ground. Oh, so the big, the big screw nut thing. So ground is this big hole here. And what I should get is on these bottommost ones here, I should get plus 12 and minus 12. There, 12, and here. Yeah, you know, it's near as damn it. You're not going to get exact numbers. It's not about the exact numbers. It's about a... You know, a hint of something, something towards something. The picture on on the diagram is of the inside of this, and you've got the back of it because it's connected together. That's a real pain. You need to kind of sort that out, I think. You maybe you need to do a photograph of it because this is is difficult. Although, I mean, the points that you're touching on, they are pretty much symmetrical. So I don't think it's that don't think it's that hard and I can see can I that, that is coming this way so that's going to be 5 and 12 well let's give it a go so that on there that should be 5 yeah that should be 12 yeah so but then on the far side you've got 12 and 12 over here 
yeah 12 and 12 and over on this one 3 in should be 5 yeah that's 5 so that's when those across the top now I've got the chips to do so the chip in the middle I've got 12 and 12 just under the ground so I've got 12 yeah and 12 yeah plus and minus 12 once I get the right corner and then there's another chip over here 12 and 12 or minus 12 so I think that that is all cool so that's all cool on that one so how do I then do other things which are on here if I can't if this is over, if this is over the top well I guess I turn it over see if I can work it out from the underside so again I've got a 12 plus 12 12 12 yeah I've got a 5 volts over here yeah okay I then got a 10 volts on one of those legs of that thing I just put in and there 10 yeah or a minus 10 rather and there's a minus 12 on the bottom of this here so I know I'm not explaining this very well minus 12 yes I'm just going through them one at a time and seeing that they are what they say they are and it seems to be working so far this is going really well I've then just got this top section to do so I can turn that back over so it actually matches what you're looking at so definitely Bufaco do some photos of this <laughs> I would recommend that would make this a lot easier because it's a bit kind of what I'm doing what so this is the right way around so that one over there should be five volts yeah see it's much much quicker when you're the right way around this one above those resistors that seems to be a point should be minus 10 looks like I've something I've missed there's a three holes there so that is minus 10 okay going with that I've got 12 volts on this this thing here Oh yeah, there's minus 12, and there's plus 12, alright, just got to stick it in the right place. Minus 10 volts over here, yeah, minus 10 on this one, yeah, <laughs> minus 10 at the edge, yeah, you beauty, then I've got 12 on there, yeah, minus 12 on there, yeah. 5 volts down on a little pin here that I'm not going to be able to get my prong into. That's the last one. It's that one. 3 in. So if I turn her over. So there should be 5 volts there. Yes. 5 volts. Got it. So that, I think, is all tested. Good. So what happens now? Now we can put the ICs in their socket, so that's quite exciting. So I see one, two, and three are on the uh, on the little one. So the middle one is IC one. And IC one is a five five three two. So that's IC one in the middle. Right orientation. Little dot the forward bit pin one in and I see three is this one over here I see two is a TLO seven two which is what these are Now on this board, I see 100 and 101. These are both the same. They're both these. T 
TL 072s. Good. So now we need to open the mechanical components bag. Well, those are knobs. So secure the 12 min spacer into the control PCB. Now, one of the questions I have at this point is that I don't actually know which PCB they're referring to. This one or, or this one? I don't know. Because they haven't treated them separately so far or named them anything as far as I can tell. And I can't seem to find that information on the build guide. So I'm assuming this is the... Well, that this is the main PCB because it's going to have all the connections on and then this is the control one but I don't actually know is it going to matter because essentially this is a nut for holding these two things together so I'm going to call this the control PCB I'm going to stick it through there <laughs> and I'm going to stick the nut on the back Next it says place the USB connectors but don't solder them. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a little while since I've done this, so uh, I'm not I can't seem to remember anything. I mean this must be the USB connector there. I'm supposing it goes on this side. Because that must be, mustn't it? Because all the knobs are gonna come out there, so that must be there, because this is gonna go on here. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. That must be right. Don't solder. USB connectors. So there must be another one. This is another one. Okay. Snaps in. Nice. Quite like that. Encoder. Ensure, make sure the bottom of the encoder does not touch the pins below. Place the encoder. What's an encoder look like? Anybody? Right, on my written instructions, I've got to trim the pins inside the footprint to avoid them, avoid them touching the base of the encoder. Place the encoder on the PCB where the silk screen indicates. I think this is what they're talking about. Over here. Because on... Uh, on the lich, I'm assuming they're talking about this. This must be the encoder as opposed to the mechanical knobs. This is the thing that changes stuff. Yeah, so that must be the encoder. So the encoder must be in the knob bag. There is a knob that looks like it's a square rather than a circle. Yeah, see that's got, this has got so it's a square base and it goes all the way around and keeps on going. That must surely be the encoder. The rest of those are just knobs. Make sure the bottom of the encoder does not touch the pins below. I don't know. What does that mean? What pins below? I mean, I guess... I guess they're talking... Are they talking about this? No, how can that be? And that's going to be on there. So it's going to be sticking through above some bits and pieces. I don't know. This is a flipping mystery, this bit. I mean, what part of that is going to touch the bottom of anything? Leave a hex nut placed on the encoder, which will give it the right height. I don't have any hex nuts, so I'm going to go with one of oh, but these are these suitable nuts. I mean, none of these have got nuts on them, and we enter a time of mass confusion. Don't solder it yet. Place all the mini jacks, but don't solder them. What pins? I mean, there's a pin right there. Okay, maybe that's what they're referring to. Okay, right, so I'm an idiot. <laughs> so what they're referring to is this little row of pins here. That's what they're talking about. Now they are too small to trim, 
as far as I can see. There's nothing I can really get off them. They're just as tall, really, as the solder. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe that's helpful. So these pins here, you want to see and make sure that they're not going to touch the bottom of the encoder. And that seems to be the plan. Now the encoder seems to hold itself off the board fairly. Because it doesn't want to poke all the way through. I mean, I could probably push it so that it does, but I don't actually want it to. So I'm going to leave it fairly wobbly and just see what happens after that. Right, mini jacks. Mini jacks are old friend. We understand these. You've got three uh, three holes. You've got three legs on your socket. You just poke that outside one in and push up against it to put it in and then it should hold itself in relatively nicely. Right, just a tiny bit concerned now. There's no separate hole for this third leg. I think it's going to be sharing hole with these ones here and these ones here. That's my assumption at this point. I mean this is essentially the the ground so if that can pop into that same hole that's awesome. Yeah that seems to work fine that seems to work. So those are doubling up. Okay, good. Did that seven segment display. Now that's a bit more obvious. It's this fellow here. It's going to go there. Do I know which way up it goes? Is there an orientation? What does it tell me? Place a display, meaning that the dot will face down. Segment dot, but don't solder yet. The dot. Right, there's a little dot on it. A little dot on it goes down. That would be highly amusing to get that wrong. No, not amusing at all. Pots. So it says pots U dollar three and U dollar four need one of the location lugs to be cut. These all look the same to me. They don't appear to have location lugs. Okay, so I think here. Oh, that's that's what this referring to. U, U dollar four, U dollar three. U dollar eleven, U dollar ten. <laughs> what the dollar's got to do with anything? Okay, so. So frustratingly, the screen print for 3 and 4 is actually down at 11 and 10. But what they're referring to is these two here. So it's got the three holes, but it doesn't have a hole for that lug on that one. And it doesn't have a hole for that lug on that side. Because it's a little bit too packed in there. So I'm going to need to take off that one and that one. Okay, that makes sense. Let's just put one in like so. Just see that that works. So with this one I need to get rid of this side. Woo! Yeah, that went. In. So with this one, that way around, need to take off this side. There we go. Mind orientation. Oh, buttons. Buttons, these fellas. Right, so we have, how do you know the orientation? The flat side must align with the flat side on the PCB. So you've got, on the PCB, 
got the flat side there, flat side on here. I believe there's a flat side, so that has to go like that. And this one, there's the flat side, flat side there, has to go like that. Right, that is all in. It's looking beautiful. LED, place the LED. LED. Flat side in the silk screen is negative. Short LED is short leg is negative. Do not solder. Right, where does this go? Right in there where I can't get to it. <laughs> Flat side. Flat side is negative. Short leg is negative, long leg positive. Okay, in. Good. So, front panel. Place the plastic window into the display hole. Well, I'm just leaving this to one side for a minute. Okay. Plastic window. Display hole. Place plastic from the display hole from the back side of the panel. Remember to remove the protection plastic from both sides. Use some hot glue. To stick it. So, oh right, so this blue stuff is actually protective. This goes in here. Now if it's a tight fit, like it feels like it is, I might just not uh, attempt not to glue it. It's a little bit too tight to fit. No glue required. That's stuffed in there nicely. Okay. Attach the front panel over here by adjusting the parts until it kind of fits. Find a pair of tweezers useful for this. Just to adjust a little bit as you go down. There we go. I'm going to bend that LED because that's now pissing me off. Right, there's our problem bit. I want to go down any further now. You really do have to wiggle everything. Now that is the trickiest one of those I've ever had to do, I think. That USB then I'll stick out a bit. Alarmingly, now let's keep it together. And they're right about the height of this one, and having a nut on there. Okay, that looks like it's good and flat. Okay, use the red nuts for the outs. There's a CV out black ones for the pots. So use red nuts, smaller black nuts and the rest. Larger black ones for all the pots, showing that they're all flush and then solder. Press both buttons to make sure they're flat and all pins in the right place. Proceed to solder them. Okay, so this is the this is the final bit. Oh, I've got one nut. I found the hex nut. That was the one. Oh my goodness, that's the one that should go under there. <laughs> no, no, don't make me take it all off. Don't make me take it all off. You're going to make me take it all off. You are, aren't you? Damn it. Okay, good. That went back on easier than I expected. Red nut on there. See, the assumption is at this point that I'm not going to need to take it apart again. And that's always a dangerous assumption, I find. So if I put all of these on, 
I am bound to have to remove it. They're all on there, so I'm fully expecting to have to take them all off in a moment. <laughs> so we are busy attempting to solder in between other components. We need to be really careful that we're not burning the soldering iron against other things which are already there. So that can be a bit tricky. But I'm going to have to get on with that and we'll see how we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Ah, oh, see, I did it already. I've melted these bits over here. Flipping egg. So let that be a warning to you. I think I might have gotten away with it. A little bit of uh, scalpeling in the end. I think we'll sort that out. Right, this is most definitely the fiddliest build, fiddliest bit of soldering I've ever encountered. I'm not there yet because the switches have both come out. So they need to be flush. To do that, I'm gonna need to tape them up or something. Let me try tape first. It's slightly difficult. Well, they're sticking through, so I'm just going to grab the opportunity while I can see it. One leg on each. Yeah, okay, that works. Another leg in there, <laughs> not quite soldered, I'll be careful of that. Now I need to go through this pretty carefully, make sure I've not missed anything. There's another one. Well there's absolutely no way I can get to the one that's in there, that's just impossible. I'll see if I can get to that one. But these are just the standing legs. I don't believe they form anything much in terms of a, an important connection other than stability. Um, am I going to get in there? Does it matter if I get in there? Oh, I don't know. That might be something, but I've now melted the edge off a capacitor. Brilliant. Just brilliant. <laughs> right. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Oh God, no, no, right, I knew, I knew this would happen, <laughs> I knew, I knew this would happen, I'm going to have to take the front off, I knew it, I knew something would happen, I knew it, well there's a couple of reasons, <laughs> you know when I talked about that riser, been on the control board and which one was the control board and which one was I don't know what the other one was because it didn't say 
Well, I guessed wrong because in order for this to be connected to something, and I still got my LED legs on. In order for this to be connected on here, what I'm going to want to do is screw it in from this side. Screw it in from screw it in from this side. See, because as it is now. I can't put a screw in from the other side of there because the panel's in the way. There's one other thing as well, which is this that they sent me. Now this, I don't know what it's for. However, on the board here, it's a thing that says MIDI. And it's the right sort of shape for this. Just to pop on the side like that. That would make complete sense, wouldn't it? yeah now of course well, i could solder that in potentially without taking the front panel off but as i'm about to take the front panel off in order to move this nut then i can do that as well now the question is do i really need to screw that on because this one isn't going to be screwed on isn't it just going to hold itself in place anyway <laughs> so annoying so annoying sod it well we only live once so i'm just going to take all these off and do this again i still <laughs> what i've got to do i've got to get that in here i'm an idiot i'm an idiot Okay. In. That's supposed to be sticking out of here, okay? So if I didn't tell you earlier, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. No, that's no, that's not right. How can that be right? Have I got... Whoa, no. This needs to go like that. Is that going to fit? Makes it look like that's not going to go down. No, that must be right. Anyway, before I put that on, what was the other thing I was going to do? This MIDI bit. Like that. So, I'm just going to take that on. That's fine. Whether that's supposed to be there or not, I, knew, I no longer care. Right, I'm going to see if I can get this on here before I put the front panel back on in case I've done something terribly, terribly wrong. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, goodness. Look at this. Look, see, that's not going to go down because that's now clashing with that. This needs to be on the other side. Of course it does. Of course it flipping does. I'm just causing no end of trouble for myself. I think that's, that's the theme for this day, I have to say. I'm a disaster today. Oh, I'm not getting in there, am I? How am I getting in there? Got it out. I did. I got it out. I got it out. Now, can I get it back in the right way up? At this point, do I really care? Right, I'm in. <laughs> Just got to flip in, persevere sometimes. Well, I'm glad I tried this board on before 
I carried on. So, one more go. Is that pins, those pins going to go in there all right? Yeah, they seem to be. So the problem now is that this big blocky thing here fits up against this lug. This lug's going to have to go. Okay, that's in. That's in there. That's in there. There's my power. Goes up to the screw. That's in. All right, I think this can officially go down. It's one of the most difficult builds ever. These fiddly, flappy, fussing around bits and bits that just don't quite fit and match up because of the amount of you know, leeway there is, particularly in my builds. I mean, look how everything, you know, nothing is, is quite straight when I'm doing one of these. There's always a bit of to in and fro in. I haven't even put that on again yet. I don't know if I dare. All right, front panel. Front panel, 15th time's charm. I mean, it's all soldered, so it should all go on pretty, pretty well. Now, there was something on the screen. I can take the opportunity to get rid of that. Excellent. Now, it's just got my fingerprint on it. <laughs> Okay, see that's on quite easy now. Excellent, excellent. All right, back to some some place of moving forward. Now let's see if I can get the owl thing on. Yeah, that happens nice and easy. There's a USB socket for that. That goes on. Is this thing still on? You still feel, you still with me? Right. I've got a few knobs to put on, some nerlies. What does this thing even look like? Okay. Two, does it because it can go any old where good well it's all in it's all together and what I should do now is turn it on now I don't really have any idea how this thing works as yet it's going to take a little bit of time because it's a interesting and complicated potentially complicated module you know so it's going to be interesting to ooh, get into all of that. I'm going to want to spend some time doing it. So for the moment, all I'm looking to do is plug it in and see that I get some kind of lights. Now before I plug it in, is there any last bits? To ensure the main be fits with the control board, cut short the pot legs on USB 9. That's probably what I did. The regulator will hit these lugs if you don't. Yeah, so that's the, that's exactly the problem that I came to. I have spotted that and have pointed it out. Connect both together. Use the screw. Proceed to place the owl board. Connect to make sure it's properly orientated. Yes. To calibrate, follow the link and the instructions. Remember, you'll need a web MIDI compatible browser. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get to that point. I'm just going to plug it in to see that it see that the lights come on that's the plan let's have a go oh yes oh yes I definitely got lights that's telling me something I'm not sure what but it's telling me something Getting a flashing thing there. Bum, 
button, button. No longer got a flashing thing. <laughs> so there we have it, I think. The Bafaco Lich. That's the build. It's tricky, difficult, frustrating in places. It's, it's very packed in there and sometimes getting things in the right places is a little bit tricky. Don't know whether it works yet. There's a little bit of shenanigans that needs to be done with uh, web MIDI and programming or calibrating uh, the owl board that's in here. So I will do all that on another day and put it after this bit. So you'll see it in a minute. That's quite exciting for you. But otherwise, it's a good looking thing. And I'm fascinated to know exactly what it is that it does. <laughs> so last time we got all the way up to finishing it. We turned it on. We saw lights and the next step was calibration. So at the end of the build, it tells you to follow the link that's on the build guide and go off and do the calibration in a MIDI compatible browser. That normally means Chrome. I mean, most browsers I think support MIDI these days, at least seem to in my fiddling about, but Chrome tends to be the one that everybody likes. So there's a link at the end, you click on that and it will say, oh, failed, failed, can't find anything because I haven't plugged it in, I haven't plugged it in anything. So what you need is a regular USB cable, chunk that into the front and with a little bit of luck if I refresh my page it's connected connected to the lich it says and the firmware I'm running is version 21.2.2 .2. let me show you the device manager just so you know what you're looking for so in here it should be under sound video and games controllers just says owl lich it's that simple. It's the board that it's seeing. It's not really seeing the module, if you know what I mean. It's the OWL board. That's where all the DSP and technology is. It's that that's being sort of fed through and the Lich is being this front panel user interface for it. Yeah, does that make some kind of sense? So that's all that needs to be there. And now we are at the Openware Laboratory. I don't know what that is, but it seems to be a place where we calibrate it. I've not gone through this part before, so... We're just going to do it together. OK, connect an our device. Reload the page if necessary. We did that. Click load test patch. Patch loaded calibration it says zero on the lich. That's interesting. Connect the left output. Output left. To left input. Input left. And simultaneously to a voltmeter. OK. So in which case I'm going to need a malt. I do happen to have one over on this side of the of my module, of my of my stuff, of my thing, of my what's it. I do happen to have a malt over here, so I'm gonna take an output from there, put that into the input on the malt, then take the output of that into the in as it suggested, then get my voltmeter. I'm going to put this here. That'll work. Now I could probably be using my own tool as a voltmeter if I really thought about it, but sod it. I've come this far. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it onto that. That's fine. That's groovy. That's doing what I'm told. Press and hold button one and copy the value from the multimeter to the high voltage box. High voltage. Hold button number one. Now this kind of first one here. Okay, 5.04. So I stick in there. 5.04. Good. Now press and hold button 2. So if I hold that one, it gives me minus 5.02. If I hold the button here, I get minus 5.01. Oh. Oh, 02. Well, it moved a little bit. So, hmm. Let's go for minus 5.02. Then simply we click, click calibrate. Okay. Did a bunch of stuff. Got a load of things in there. Click store settings. And the patch has gone away and that all seems to be fine. 
Right, now that it's calibrated, I can stick in a sequence from something like the completely mysterious Bloom and use it as an oscillator. Now, the voltage input, the voltage per octave input is on audio input one left, which is a little bit strange. I kind of expected it to be a CV input, but I'm just going to have to go with it. There we go. Now this oscillator is in fact a polygonal oscillator, which means it has some interesting tonal qualities, as well as looking like well cool if you stick this to XY on the scope. But the lich can be all sorts of things. So for instance, I've got a, a reverb here on number two. So if I take the output of the oscillator, get this the right way around, plug that into the input. I've got a reverb. Or I've got another one here, which is a delay. Or I could have a different sort of oscillator. in fact the lich can be pretty much anything you want if we pop over to the patch library on the website on the rebel tech website this is where these are all held there's over 300 different patches covering you know generators delays distortions effects oscillations modulations uh, reverb synth synthesis dynamics all sorts of stuff and you can just connect your device shows you what you've got currently going on and you can choose one and load it so if I find another oscillator for instance four saw four saw oscillators Suffice to say that there's a whole load of possibilities available to you within this oscillator, within this module, within this DSP platform. And that's something I'm going to get into in a lot more detail in another video. But as for now, I think, I think that's enough. I think that's plenty. I think we've got to the end of this epic build of the Lich module. <laughs> and I'm looking forward now to settling down and having a play with some of the possibilities. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. Building the Lich was difficult. It was it's a tricky one. I ran into lots of little niggly little problems. And that can make the DIY build quite disheartening sometimes, quite frustrating. But that is an element of building your own modules, which you will encounter from time to time. It can be hard. You will break things 
from time to time and that can get tough but that still doesn't take away from the the marvelousness of working your way through a kit and putting these things together it's still absolutely worth it so there you are i hope that was helpful and in the meantime go and make some tunes <laughs>